got a question in from a viewer. This is Sally from Tavistock, Ontario. So this is what she wants to know, Max. I'm going to a new stylist and I want a new look. I have an idea of what I want. I'm thinking Reese Witherspoon. Should I bring in pictures of the style I want? And we thought we would ask you this because it, a, a lot of us aren't sure how we should be dealing with our hairstylists. Maybe it's something, a new look we've never tried before. You don't want to insult anyone. Is it insulting to bring in a picture or does that help you as a hairstylist? Oh, it absolutely helps because sometimes, you know, what your vision and my vision, it could be, you know, quite different. Yeah. So I find with photographs, it, it kind of puts the proof in the pudding right there. So a stylist can look at it, a client can look at it, and then they can sort of achieve the right look with what they see in front of them. So if they say, I want to be Rihanna, it could be Rihanna with a shaved head, it could be Rihanna with no hair, it could be Rihanna with long red hair, you need the picture of Rihanna to figure out which Rihanna they exactly. want to be. Exactly. And also, too, it's very important to make sure that you pick a photograph of a, of a celebrity or a photograph of somebody that has very similar hair to what you have. Right. So you have to be a little bit more realistic. So if you are going to be doing something like that, make sure that the hair is closest to what you have in terms of texture, fineness, thickness, yeah. and then that sort of makes it a little bit easier to achieve the better look. What do you do if I come in with my long weave and I want to look like Angela Davis with a huge afro? Like, how do you break that news to me that this is not going to happen today, honey? What do you do in that situation? Do you just say, hey, I can give you the closest thing to this? but th it's not going to be exactly what you want? Well, you know, you can try to achieve it because it's all about styling as well and also the time. So certain looks can be achieved. You just need a little bit more time. So sometimes, you know, if you only have an hour and that hairstyle might take an hour and a half to two hours, then, you know, you can tell the client, you know, we can rebook and then today we can give you this for this time period. But if you want to achieve a look like this, we can sort of book accordingly to achieve that look. Right, but I guess you also have to sort of make them not delusional, right? <laughs> yeah. A little bit? Like, little that's that, part yeah. of your job, too. Yeah. Now, I know this has never happened to you, Max, but what happens if at the end of your appointment, the person's not happy with the look? Never happened to Max before, um, so... What would if, someone else do? If, if, if they're not satisfied with the look, then you can sort of like go about to sort of figure out how can we achieve something that you are going to be satisfied with. Okay. And so, you know, go from there yeah. and make the client feel very comfortable as well because, you know, sometimes there could be uh, miscommunication between the um, hairstylist and the client. And so what I try to do is I try to make sure that there's a very even boundary between the communication between the two so they can have the look that they're trying to go after. Yeah, it's a very interesting relationship, a person and yeah. their hairstylist, isn't it? <laughs> it like, is. People who want to change a hairstylist, they feel like they can't do it because they're cheating on them. They don't want anyone else to do their cut or color because if their hairstylist sees, they're going to think they're cheating. So it is a good relationship, but it's all about communication. Communication is Just very, like very important. Just a good marriage, right? Yes, it is very important, yeah. Thank you, Max. You're welcome.